What's up everyone? Uh, I assume you're interested in the video if you clicked on it, but I realize this is outside the normal path that my videos tend to take. Uh, I've always kind of built this channel around my guitar playing, but I am a violinist as well. So I thought I'd use the platform to share some of the settings that I've created on the Line 6 Helix to manipulate the sound of an electric violin and improve it greatly. So uh, I'm playing a Ned Steinberger uh, NXT 5 string. This is one of the older ones before they switched to being active. And it's a good violin, but I think the whole basis of an electric violin is being able to manipulate it with old school analog gear if you're one of those guys. Or uh, if you're into the new modeling stuff, I think they can be very powerful as well. So this video, and I'll have a couple more videos coming out. You can check the description for those. Um, this video is going to be focusing on creating a fake acoustic sound out of your electric violin. Not everyone wants to bring their prized acoustic into a dive bar and have some drunk step on it. So uh, what I do is I'm not, I mean, it's a nice instrument, but I, I'm not going to be heartbroken if it gets ruined at a bar. Uh, anyway, I use this to kind of create a fake acoustic sound. There's going to be four impulse responses I'm using in this video. And actually, uh, impulse responses, people usually like to create them and charge money for them. Someone was kind enough to upload these as public domain. So uh, there's three violin IRs and one viola impulse response. That's what IR stands for if you didn't get that yet. Um, so you will need to download those. They're free. Like I said, I'll leave the link in the description to this video. So if you're following along and you're stealing the settings from my screen, it'll make it easy for you to find the IRs online and just drop them right in. I realize it can be kind of tedious to go into HX Edit and you know tweak all the settings exactly as I have them. Uh, so I had people reach out and say, you know, I'd be perfectly willing to pay for these. And so I set up a PayPal donation-based system. So a donation of any amount uh, sent to the link also in the description will get you access to an ever-expanding library of sounds. Most of them are guitar right now. Uh, but if when by the time you're watching this video, I'll have 12 presets of violin, electric violin tones up there. So uh, check that out if you're more interested in a quick fix. Uh, but if not, if you're watching this video, hopefully I can share some tips with you on how to create your own settings as well. Uh, so uh, anyway, we'll jump over to HX Edit and we'll get started. All right, so this is the HX Edit software. If you own a Helix unit but you don't have the software yet, I definitely recommend getting it. It's free and it just makes it so much easier to uh, create sounds and everything. And as far as I understand, you will need it to import impulse responses like I'm showing you in this video. Uh, but let's, let's just start by going through what the dry sound of this violin is. Nothing special, it's just a normal electric violin sound, I'd like to say. It's kind of an annoying piezo quack to it, um, which is the case for a lot of electric violins. But my idea with this instrument is that it's meant to be manipulated, so that's what we're going to do. Let's start by looking at the input impedance. I set it at 90k, which I know isn't by the books, but the name of the game here is use your ear and find out what works best for you. For whatever reason, that sounds good to me. So I just went with 90k on all of my violin presets. Moving on to the first EQ block. Uh, this is where I'm setting up the sound to go into the impulse response so that the impulse response can uh, operate as best as possible. So I'm cutting off some lows here. The big thing here is the low cut. If I turn this off and all of my other effects, you're going to hear that um, there's a lot of like low kick drum range thudding that happens when you change bow strokes. Of course you'll need good headphones or a good sound system to hear that. But turning on this EQ kind of gets rid of that. And as well, I've applied a massive high cut to it. Everything above 12.5 kilohertz is gone. There's nothing useful up there. There's no useful information on the electric violin up there. So you might as well just get rid of it. And then some other stuff. I boosted the highs a little bit at around 6.9 kilohertz. And then cut the mids and the lows back a little bit. You can see the settings there. No use going too much into detail. Next thing we've got is the compression here. And uh, this, again, these two, by the way, these two blocks are going to be the same for all of the, uh, the settings that I'm showing in this video. So if you're creating these settings, why don't you just go ahead and emulate these settings and the reverb too, by the way. And uh, just copy and paste that four times, and then you only have to edit the EQ block and the remaining IR block. Anyway, the compression is essential for kind of gluing everything together and making uh, a signal that the IR can use as best as possible. It just keeps everything a little bit more consistent. I have to say that 
uh, one downfall of using digital software to emulate an acoustic violin sound is that if you want to go go and try and get a different sound, you know, you might change your, your bowing on an acoustic violin, but you really don't have that option here. It's just kind of one sound, uh, but I have created some other ways to get around that. We'll get there in a second. Uh, there's the compression settings, 85% mix, uh, and this lets a little bit of the dry sound through. And then moving on to the IR, this is obviously the main part of the preset. This is going to be using the first of the four IRs you get. This is my favorite sound, by the way, the first electric violin acoustic setting here over on the left. Out of the sounds that I've created, this is my favorite so far. So I put a little bit more of a low cut on there. Again, uh, a bit more of a drastic high cut. I set the mix at 70% because I think you still want a little bit of your dry sound coming through along with the IR. Uh, because if you listen to the IR by itself, it sounds a little bit unnatural. Let's hear this. Let's set it to 70% where I had it. I just think it sounds better that way. And I set the level at negative 18 decibels. This is so that I get a unity gain coming out of all my presets. So if you get the preset pack, like I mentioned earlier in the video, all of the settings that are in it are at the exact same output volume. So you can switch between stuff mid-set and not have to worry about the sound guy scrambling and, and messing with faders to get the right mix again. Uh, this just makes it easier for everyone. Anyway, there's the IR settings for the first, uh, the first impulse response. And then I do a little bit of shaping here with the graphic EQ. All right, and uh, what I have set up here, you'll see some stuff over here for foot switch two. This means that when I hit the foot switch two, you're gonna get a little bit different EQ setting. And that's the settings when I do this. This is just a way to get two different sounds out of the same impulse response. Maybe out of the, the three violin settings that I have here, you like number two the best, but you get to a venue and it sounds different than you're used to. Try hitting that switch and it'll change a little bit. It might sound better for you, it might sound worse, but anyway, you got two options there and that makes it easy. By the way, while I'm talking about this, let's talk about uh, the third foot switch, which you've seen down here. This is just a boost, and I do this with all my presets. Foot switch three is always a six decibel boost for me. And this is just to help cut through. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of mids to the sound. I haven't done that here, um, but uh, on the acoustic violin, I don't think you really need to. It's mid heavy already but it's basically for a solo boost. If you wanna stick out in a full band mix and just cut through a little bit more so that the audience can hear you when you're supposed to be playing an exposed part, that's what Foot Switch 3 does. Um, a volume block, I use an expression pedal with my HX stomp. So I always have a volume block in there and then just this normal reverb. It's just a chamber reverb from the legacy effects uh, thing which I think is from the DL4 series, whatever their reverb pedal was for that. I don't know. This is It's old school Line 6 effects, but I think it sounds good. Let's change to the second EQ setting. And back to the first one. There's the first preset. All right, so moving on to the second preset, the uh, input impedance is the same, the EQ block, the first one is the same, the compression block is also the same. The IR changes uh, to the second impulse response from that link that is in the description. And, uh, but otherwise, all the other settings are the same. And then the EQ settings are changing from the from the first uh, preset as well. These are the settings for the first sound, and then hit foot switch two, and these are the settings you'll get for the other sound, the alternate sound. And uh, if you don't know how to do this, by the way, I'll show you real quick. Go into bypass controller assign over here on the right, and then select which uh, parameter of that effect that you want to change. So we're set up on the 10 band graphic here, and I can say I want to change 125 hertz. Uh, for the first sound, uh, you're going to look at my setting and set it to negative 8 decibels. When I showed you the second setting, you have to rewind now 
uh, set it to negative nine decibels. And when you switch with foot switch two, it'll do that. You can see it over here as well as all the other settings. This is what the violin two preset sounds like. And then the alternate setting for the EQ. And then also the boost as usual with the foot switch three. That just affects the level down here. Let's go on to number three now. Uh, preset number three. Again, impedance is the same. First EQ block is exactly the same. The compression is the same. The IR block is the same, except for the fact that I've changed the IRs to the Langhoff violin uh, impulse response. All right, and then EQ, this is the setting. This has changed from before, from the other two presets. So this is my first setting, and this is my second setting. Here's what it sounds like on the primary setting. And on the second one. So, uh, by the way, volume and reverb haven't changed still. Uh, let's go back to back and I'm just gonna play them and play a scale on each of them and you can decide which one sounds the best. So if you're watching this video and you only wanna steal one of the settings, then I'm gonna save you some time here. So this is the first acoustic violin preset with the primary EQ. Secondary EQ. You can tell it got a little bit brighter there. Uh, and then violin two preset. Let's look at the EQ again. We're gonna do the primary EQ first. A little bit brighter on that one as well. And then the third preset, let's look at the EQ block again. And the second option for EQ. That one's really mid-focused, so uh, you might be in a scenario where you need that, um, and that's why I've done that. And then finally, uh, creating a acoustic viola sound. I think this impulse response is pretty good. And I have I changed any of the settings on the EQ? I don't think so. I don't think the EQ or the compression has changed here. So use the settings from before again, 90 input impedance, 90K and then pull up, make sure you pull up the viola impulse response or you're gonna be wasting your time. And then here's the EQ. Let's play the, the viola setting. Something about the impulse response is it doesn't really uh, affect the areas that a viola wouldn't play. It doesn't affect it very well. So you can tell when you start playing up on your E string that it's not gonna sound much like a viola anymore. I just think the C string sounds so good on that IR. And then uh, the second option for the EQ. First option again. Second option. Second option is a little bit more mid-focused, I feel like, um, and it'll just cut through a little bit easier, I, th I think, also. And then, obviously, same volume and um, reverb block. So, anyway, I hope this has helped you in some form or another. Remember, I have all of my Helix settings, not just electric violin tones, but all of my electric guitar stuff in the folder in the description. Um, so what I do with the PayPal Helix pack is I just set up the link in the description. You send any amount of money, you suggest a donation might be like $5, and um, include your email in the notes, and I can send you the full Helix library that I've created. And um, you're going to see all of the sounds uh, that you see over here in it.
so all 12 of these sounds plus some it's a work in progress so you're gonna get a link to a Google Drive folder and if you want to a year or two from now check back on that Google Drive folder and you'll have access to all of my new and updated sounds there as well hope you guys enjoyed that video chances are by the time you see this video I have some other videos out as well so check them out uh, I'm gonna talk about creating a fake acoustic cello tone from a normal electric violin and we're going to talk about creating uh, different uh, variations on clean sounding, mildly overdriven, or very heavy gain violin tones, and also some cool ambient sounds that I've created in the Helix software. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like and subscribe button. Stay tuned for more, and I'll see you next time.